for over 50 years. Kirby Morgan has revolutionized commercial diving. From masks to helmets and everything in between. Dive into history with us as we step into the Dive Locker. Nineteen sixty seven, Kirby Morgan Band Mask Seven. This was the first of their masks to use the band. Bob Kirby designed and made the band and the retaining balls, while Dick Quitner crafted all the side blocks. They utilized U.S. Divers Con Shelf 12 regulators, modified with their dial breath for years until 1977, when they manufactured the entire regulator. The most dramatic aspect of the mask was its face seal, stretched across like a trampoline with a hole for the face to fit through, an entirely original design by Bev. After observing a diver with a face squeeze, the team recognized the need for a different approach and developed a removable hood and face seal secured with a simple two-screw band known as the Kirby Morgan Band Mask. This innovation addressed the issues with glued-in face seals, allowing for easy removal and replacement without the need for adhesives. Additionally, earphones were placed in pockets within the hood for easier replacement. A crucial advancement was the introduction of an adjustable demand regulator. Unlike scuba air supplies, compressors used by commercial divers can vary widely in output pressure as they cycle on and off during a dive. This variability, combined with the different depths at which divers work, necessitated an adjustable regulator to effectively meet surface supply divers' needs. The adjustable regulator has since been incorporated into all their masks and helmets, featuring a demand regulator. Around 1967-1968, many vital guests visited the small shop at Santa Barbara Airport, where Kirby kept his airplane just outside the door. The team often closed the shop to go flying. Frequent visitors included astronaut Scott Carpenter, who was part of the Sea Lab program, along with representatives from General Electric, Westinghouse, Union Carbide, various foreign navies, and the U.S. Navy, all interested in the new diving equipment being developed. Some visitors, including Scuba Pro, U.S. Divers, and Decor, expressed interest in buying the business. Kirby and his partner called this period the Big Buyout. Despite the enticing offers, they recognized that these proposals often masked the reality of restrictive contracts that limited their creative freedom and independent design. This concludes this episode of the Diving into the Kirby Morgan Archives. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Dive Locker. <laughs>